So the next song, number six, Follow Me. This is one of the few, uh, this one and Road Trip to Truth have had a title change from when I initially wrote them. I, all the other songs on here, I think, stayed the same in title, but the content changed a lot. Um, uh, Road Trip to Truth, like I said, used to be called Angst, and then Follow Me used to be called She's Not Out of My League, and it was about totally, totally different thing. Um, this was, again, one of those girls I had a crush on. And uh, it was me thinking, oh, you know, she's a rich girl, but, like, I'm going to, like, go get her or whatever. And um, so I initially wrote the song for that. And then, you know, that didn't happen because it wasn't supposed to happen. And then I, I wrote a final chorus as kind of like a goofy kind of reconciliation of like, oh, you know, maybe she was out of my league, but who cares? Being single is cheap. Uh, and then maybe other girls are different. Maybe other girls will care about me. Um, so I was kind of like trying to, you know, joke my way out of it uh, even then. And that was maybe two or three years ago when I had rewritten that last chorus in Bridge. Um, but again, when I was sitting down with this album, this is a really good song. This is another, this turned out to be one of my favorite songs on this album. Um, I knew it was a good song. The, the lick, the, or the riff is... It's just like a cool... It's one of my favorite riffs to play. Um, so I've always liked this song. So I was like, I have to include this on the album, but I don't want it to be about that. You know, and so I was like, okay, how do we change this? <laughs> and so I know, I knew the key part was, um, and then it was, uh, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll sing it again. So the song was originally, maybe, uh, about me, like, was kind of the transition line, and I was like, that's, there's something there. Like, let's, let's hone in on that. And so, um, I kind of was like, well, this is where I think I started thinking about, okay, am I gonna actually write songs with an overtly Christian theme? Um, I think this was the first song I was willing to do that with. Um, and so I kind of was honing in, okay, follow me? Like maybe it could be about, like I just, I just, I thought like, okay, about me. I need, I need something to fit there. So follow me kind of fits. Maybe I can write it about like what Jesus has called us to do from his perspective. And I was like, I don't know if I want to write a song from Jesus' perspective, because that can get a little, a little blasphemous if you're not careful. Um, but also it's art, you know? And I'm not at all claiming to be Jesus. For the record, I don't know if I had to specify that, but this is not me claiming to be Jesus, okay? Just wanted to get, there, get that out in the open. Um, I was just kind of thinking from Jesus' perspective and, and kind of using some of the words and, and ideas he's, he, he said to kind of write a song is what it turned into. But again, I had, n this is an entire rewrite. You know, in the past we've had big portions rewritten, like with Roots, you know, sometimes barely any of it got rewritten, like with You Don't Own Me Anymore. This was an entire rewrite. The whole song was rewritten from start to finish, and that's why it has a different title. Um, the music is the same as it's always been, um, but yeah, the lyrics were totally different. Um, so I was thinking, follow me, like maybe pick up your cross daily and follow me, and like thinking about the rich young ruler and stuff. And I was thinking about, oh, you know, American culture, there's a lot of rich young rulers out there, a lot of people with a lot of money. Um, 
you know, they, they've got some, they, we, can, we can hone in on that a little bit too. So um, I'm going to check the battery again. So yeah, ho honing in on the rich young ruler um, specifically and, and picking up your cross daily and following him uh, was kind of the, the theme I thought would be cool for this song. So uh, it goes, so you got life pretty good. But you still feel stuck. You got some money and some love. But it's not enough. Because at the end of the day, that's what most people are striving after. Is either money or love. And they do it however they can sometimes. And um, it's, it's sad to see how people will pursue those things. But this guy um, has money. He has love, but it's still not enough. Um, you can't get fulfillment no matter what you try. All those things that promised it turned out to be a lie. Because again, sin, sin promises so much. Um, the world promises so much, but it never delivers on its promises. Only Jesus delivers on his promises in that way. Um, yeah, people will lie and cheat and get you to believe whatever they can in order to give you hope. Um, and, and they can manipulate you if you're not careful. So, um, you can't get fulfillment no matter what you try. All those things that promised it turned out to be a lie. And then, for some reason, th again, this was me just trying to kind of match the melody I had already had and put some new words in there. And so the original melody was, um, uh, cause she's not out of my league, cause who knows, she just might like me. So I was like, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. I was just kind of like ad-libbing. And I was like, okay, you say that you want to be free. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's keep going there. You say that you want to be free. Um, and then I thought about it and I was like, there's a lot of people out there who don't really understand what true freedom is. Um, especially when it comes to like political stuff and living in America and everything. We, we talk about freedom a lot, but there's a lot of people who are slaves to themselves. And that's the next line. Free, uh, well... Yeah, you do what you want, but you're slave to yourself. Um, the first half of that, um, a lot of people think that freedom means the right to do what you want. But that's not what freedom is. Freedom is the liberty to do what you ought. I think, um, I don't know who said that, but that's a, it's a very big quote in my life. Um, because if everybody's doing what they want, that's not freedom. Um, that's, they're, they're living in bondage to their flesh at that point. They're not living in freedom. F true freedom actually is following the plan God has for your life. And being given the liberty to fulfill the calling He's given you in the way that gives him the most glory. That is true freedom. Um, and it sounds restrictive if, you're, if you don't understand the concept, but um, liberty is uh, oftentimes a better word to describe what I think of as freedom as opposed to what I think a lot of people think of as freedom because liberty implies obligation and responsibility. Freedom implies, for some people, neither of those things. Just the freedom to do what you want. So, um, you do what you want, but you're slave to yourself. Uh, and then I, I like this line. It's maybe not the most uh, theologically accurate, but it was kind of like a little humorous line I came up with. It was like, you do what you want, but you're slave to yourself. Well, if you're slave to yourself, you better check with your master before I can help. Because Jesus is never going to go anywhere where he's not invited. Um, he's not going to...
push you into following him. Um, but if you're a slave to yourself, then your master is yourself. So if you really want me to help you out, you gotta like make sure your heart's in the right place kind of a thing. That's kind of the, the idea of that line. And it's a little humorous, I guess, in a way. Maybe not the most theologically accurate, but <laughs> I don't know. I think it fits. Um, if you really want your freedom, I only ask one thing. Follow me. And it, that's the whole concept of this album right there, is surrender. Just surrender what you have for yourself. Follow me. That's all Jesus wants. If you really want your freedom, that's the only thing he asks. Um, and he, you know, he laid down his life for us so that we can then lay down our lives for him. And that's the only way we get true freedom is by letting go of the things we once held dear and holding on to something much more precious, which is our relationship with our Father. And that's, you know, I talked about that in earlier songs too. So um, that's kind of the key idea of this song. Um, and then I kind of develop it a little bit in the second verse. You say that you don't like when people tell you what to do. Um, again, going back to freedom. I don't want people to tell me what to do. I want to have the right to do what I want, right? Um, but you seem to like it when they do it on the evening news. And this goes back to propaganda a little bit. Um, maybe they don't directly tell you what they want you to do on the evening news, but everybody's got an agenda when it comes to the news. Everybody's going to try and convince you to go one way or another and follow their agenda. And if they can convince you well enough of that, that you came to that conclusion by yourself, then they got you. <laughs> so um, I've seen some people um, get really caught up in the news and uh, political stuff. And um, they, they don't realize that they are the very thing they're claiming to fight against. Um, you know, you're, you say you're fighting for freedom and you say you're, you're, you're fighting for, you know, not being told what to think. But who, who told you you should fight so hard about that? Oh, you saw these things on the ev evening news that made you angry, that made you upset. You know, you're just playing right into their plan. Like, it's, it's, it's so easy to see through. But some people just, just don't, and, and it's sad. But um, they say to keep your freedom you got to stand and fight. And this is both sides of the political aisle. This is Republican. This is a Democrat. This is the full spectrum here. doesn't matter what your, your political beliefs are. Both sides want you to go fight for their beliefs. And they want you to be part of what they see as freedom. Um, you know, Republicans tend to see less government as more freedom. And uh, Democrats tend to see... Um, more, I guess they see more government intervention and, and orchestration um, allows us to not have to work so hard for what, you know, we would have less responsibility. And so it's easier for us if our responsibility is already taken care of. And I guess I hope that's the best. I'm really distilling a lot of big concepts into very small words there. Um, but either side is false. Like, they're getting you to believe that you can have more freedom if you just do what they say. Um, and if you're fighting for it, then, you know, they got you. So they say to keep your freedom, you got to stand and fight. But you've been fighting for so long, you can't get sleep at night. I know a lot of people um, like this. They, they lose sleep over stuff that doesn't even involve them. Like... Oh, the world's going to... It's such a mess. The world's all messed up and, oh, I... I you know, there's, there's trouble in the Middle East and, uh, you know, the, the border wall is unprotected or, oh, you know, there's this, this great um, injustice being done against minorities in America and, and, you know, regardless of political affiliation. How does that affect you directly? You know? Like, 
your life's pretty good. Most of these people that I'm, I'm talking to um, in this song, their life's pretty good. And well, the things that keep them up at night um, don't actually really directly affect them for a lot of it. Um, and I've seen that a lot. So that's that line. But, you can't, uh, but you've been fighting for so long you can't get sleep at night. And then chorus again. You say that you want to be free, but do you know what that really means? You do what you want as a slave to yourself. Um, first course I said, but you're slave to yourself. Second course I say, as a slave to yourself. It's kind of the same concept. I just didn't really know with if but you're, you're a slave to yourself or as a slave to yourself kind of worked better. I felt like they were kind of the same. So I was like, you know what? Let's just do both. <laughs> I'll do one for the first course. I'll do the other line for the second course. Um, you better check with your master before I can help. If you really want your freedom, I only ask one thing. Follow me. And then we got this, this super cool guitar solo. Um, most of it was improvised, actually, uh, which is really cool to say. Um, I never really had a guitar solo planned. I always had the... Um, I always had that as like a little musical interlude where you could just kind of like jump around and, you know, do that. But I never really had a solo planned. So I just kind of played around and saw what came out, and it turned out, this is one of my favorite solos on the album. So here you go, I'll, I'll show it to you. Oh, that's the last song. I never opened the new song. Um, it's kind of the bridge, too. So this is kind of, again, there's no lyrics for the bridge, but this is the shift. This is the pivot part of the song. Um, so, here we go. Say yourself, you better check with your kid out If you really want your freedom One more thing real quick before we get to the solo. I also purposefully delivered the line, Follow me. Um, Follow me. Much softer. Um, Follow me. Like, it's this big, if you really want one thing. Follow me. Like, very soft for the word follow me. The idea there is, again, Jesus is never going to yell at you or bang down your door and make you follow him. He's going to ask you in a still, small voice. So I just thought that was a good way to express that concept musically. So that's why it's softer than the rest of the course. But anyway, the solo, the super cool solo. Follow me. So I, I, I'll kind of break it down. I won't go too in-depth to it. Um, I kind of knew I wanted to do a... Uh, and I could spend hours talking about how I improvise and think musically. But um, I knew I kind of wanted to like bring us into it a little slow with like a tasty little... Some kind of like pentatonic thing. And then um, I kind of just jumped down to like a... Like a... I was just kind of playing around with like a you know, diatonic scale. Um, and then I, I happened to, happen to end on a... I really liked that. And so I kind of went... Um, I was like, Let, that was cool. Let's kind of emphasize that. So it's like, I really like the... Um. And then I did this little, those little... Uh, the, the Michelangelo Badio... Uh,
That was one of the first things I learned when I was like trying to learn how to shred was the the back and forth Michelangelo video uh, scales. So I was like, let's get a little fast part in there. And let's kind of end it with some some tremolo picking and whammy and just kind of bring it. Um, it I didn't totally improvise that. I kind of played around with it and kind of had some concepts that came out. I was like, oh, let's keep that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it is a patched together solo. Most of my solos are patched together. Um, so I was, but I was keeping those ideas in mind as I was trying to play those certain parts of the, of the solo. The, the bend, the diatonic scale, the, the I guess that'd be the ninth. Um, and then the fast Michelangelo belly part, and then tremolo picking. That was kind of my general road map I had. Um, but yeah, I'll play it solo one more time, and then we'll move on to the verse three. Or yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to walk by faith, not sight. Um, I really, really wanted to get the line about um, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So that was my initial line for this pre-course here. And, I, and then I was like, okay, that's a good line. Let's rhyme it with, oh yeah, we could do like walk by faith, not sight. That, that rhymes with my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, Let's do that. But I just could not get yoke is easy and burden is light to fit rhythmically. Um, so I kept, I know sometimes it's hard to walk by faith, not sight. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just, what else rhymes with sight? Light? Uh, yeah. You can't ignore the, you can't escape the darkness if you ignore the light. Um, which is actually a pretty good line, but I, I didn't really have much meaning behind that. It was me just trying to rhyme a good line about walking by faith, not by sight. Um, and that is true freedom. Because um, again, yoke is easy, burden is light. You know, it's, it's, the burden is not really a burden. It's, it's the obligation, it goes back to liberty. It's that obligation and responsibility that you have to fulfill the calling Jesus called you to do, but it's not hard. It's like, yes, there's responsibility to it. But when you walk in faith and not by sight, it's actually a joy to kind of be underneath um, and, and not have a certain amount of freedom, um, maybe not the freedom you wanted kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, but then you, you can't escape the darkness if you ignore the light. So why don't, this, this is the, again, the last course is different because we had that pivot. Um, I, I try to do this a lot where the bridge kind of changes the tone of the song. And sometimes I'll make the last chorus different, or, you know, it, we've seen variation of that so far, but... So why don't you just let it go? And deny yourself one, one time more. I kind of just said one time more because it kind of fit with the rhythm of the song. So why don't you just let it go and deny your... Because, like, why don't, why don't, and deny your... Like, it's kind of the same. It's kind of a rhyme, not really like a slant rhyme. Um, deny self once a more. Because um, that's what we're called to do is deny ourselves. Pick up our cross daily and follow him. Um, all those things that you thought would save you turn to dust. Um, kind of thinking about all we are is dust in the wind. <laughs> uh, kind of getting a little Ecclesiastes there. Um, you know, it's all vanity. It's all just dust. Um, from dust we came, and to dust we shall return. I think that's Job. Um, we are just dust that God has given life. If you look at Genesis, that's how he created Adam. Um, I think that's right. Let's, let's go see Genesis to make sure I'm not being heretical here. Yeah, 
looks like Genesis 2, 7. Yeah, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Yeah, so the only reason we're alive is we're just dust that God has breathed life into, which is a really cool concept. And so all those things that you thought would save you turn to dust goes back to what I've said the whole time while talking about this song. I'm not going to force you, but I just want your trust. You know, that's, that's, that's really what it comes down to when it comes to following Jesus, is he's not going to force you. But every, Chuck Missler had a, had a quote, it was, every single day is God um, asking you, do you trust me? And it'll be a little bit more every day. Like, okay, you trust me? Okay, cool. So we, 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 you trust me this much more? And then, do you trust me this much more? Do you trust me this much more? That's like, that is true sanctification. And the Christian journey is every day a little bit more. Do you trust me? Um, so I'm not going to force you, but I just want your trust. So pick up your cross today. I'm begging you, just please follow me. Um, this goes into another conversation, I guess, about... Again, writing from Jesus' perspective and maybe um, taking creative liberties, but Jesus wants us to be with him. You know, I don't think that's a stretch to say, I'm begging you just please. Like, he wants us to be with him. He wants to love us. And he, that's why he died for us, is because he loves us. So, the only way he can really love us for eternity is if you know, we follow him. He can't, he, he will be eternally separated from, we will be eternally separated from him if we don't follow him. And he doesn't want that for us. So I don't think it's a stretch to say, I'm begging you, just please follow me. Um, so I don't know. We, we can have a conversation about that if, if there's a theological issue there. Um, I guess. But anyway. And then I kind of did some ad-libs here at the end. Um, I, what kind of came out was I, the the melody came out and then I kind of harmonized it later. But yeah, this is just kind of ad lib. So, yeah, I, I don't think that's a... It, it's, a it's art. <laughs> Jesus, I don't think, would mind if you, if you just fell on him and trusted him with everything. So, I don't know. Kind of cheesy line. It was an ad lib. I'm keeping it. Deal with the theology. <laughs> okay, moving on.